Maddie Harlan from Permaculture Magazine. I'm at the Oxford Real Farming Conference 2020 and I'm speaking with John Meagley from the Pasture Fed Livestock Association. John, you presented in the main introductory plenary yesterday and I was very, very taken with what you said in such a short period of time and I, I wonder if we could revisit um, the role of livestock around the earth and also this very controversial um, question of methane and how we seem to be in the non-farming culture conflating industrial agriculture with regenerative uh, grass-fed smaller scale livestock agriculture and thinking that it's all the same thing. Okay, well I suppose I started by I went to the LEAP uh, Livestock Environment um, pr Programme uh, in Oxford recently and uh, Dr. Taro Takahashi from um, Northwick Rothamsted Station. Um, he had a slide which noted this, this move towards the plant-based diet and maybe a holy plant diet. And he, he posed the question, what would happen uh, to the world's soil if there was never livestock on it again, ever. And that really struck home to me. And um, so I, I look back, there's a guy called uh, uh, Dr. Andre Newman, who in uh, 2003, he produced a picture of the planet in, in which he'd taken all, all the water, sea water and fresh water in the world, and put it into a sphere. Um, which you can see on the slide, and the, um, the, the large sphere is all the water. The smaller sphere is the fresh water, and there's a little dot that you can hardly see, which is the fresh water in the lakes and rivers that we can actually access. So, uh, Dr. Simon Jeffrey of um, uh, Harper Adams College at the Groundswell Conference last year, and I went to his talk, he did the same for soil, and he took all, all the soil in the world, which is uh, from memory 4.2 billion hectares, to a depth of 20 centimetres, um, and he put that into a sphere. And that sphere is just 25 kilometres across. And you can see this in, in a slide. Um, all, that's all the world's topsoil, um, which is rather startling, really. Now, if you, if you take that and if you spread that soil right across the globe, again, across all the farmland. Two-thirds of that, um, two -thirds of that uh, soil is covered with pasture, uh, which is grazed by ruminants. Um, and it's really under that pasture and trees on that pasture and the grazing ruminants that soil evolved in the, the, in, in, in the first place. So, um, Clearly, how we manage that pasture is going to be critical in terms of the carbon, uh, nutrient and hydrological cycles. So then I, I took people to India because I've spent six years working in rural India, actually not on agriculture, I was working on uh, rural sanitation. But working in the villages, it's quite clear that everybody has a cow, or maybe four cows, or, or, or more. And what I found uh, startling was that there are about a third of the world's ruminants, uh, the large ruminants, uh, cattle and buffaloes and, and uh, goats and so on, are in India. Uh, and they produce between 17 and 20 percent of the world's milk. Um, and this is fed, uh, these animals are, um, eat uh, pasture and uh, crop uh, byproducts. Um, the milk that is not consumed in the household, which is most of it, um, is then, uh, these 75 million dairy farmers, the milk is then distributed through 60,000 dairy cooperatives, where it goes into the urban areas where it is uh, sold. And then the income from that flows back down into the, um, into the villages. You then have the dung, 
which traditionally was burnt, but increasingly uh, goes into a biogas digester and roughly five kilograms of dung will um, produce enough gas to cook a meal for a large family. The dung then comes out at the bottom um, and uh, can go back with all its nutrient value retained, then goes back onto the land um, to rebuild the fertility of the soil. Um, and that seemed to be an amazing system of um, it's a salt. circular agriculture circular economy, isn't agriculture, it? Yeah. Uh, economy. And the question really came to me, well, are we in the West um, with our urban eyes um, really suggesting that these that these rural people should give up this way of life. And I don't think so. So having spent the last five decades, gosh, since 1968, uh, working in rural Africa and Asia, I felt it was important to try and address this question um, through, through their eyes, rather than through those, uh, through the Western urban eyes which is the way that we, that we tend to look at things. Well, then um, I began to look at um, when we cultivate soil to produce the, the plants that, that we all need, animals and people, and people need, uh, cereals and pulses and uh, root crops and so on, we damage the soil and we release um, carbon dioxide, we release moisture, we damage the mycorrhiza, and so on and so on. And we um, traditionally, what farmers have done is they've planted pasture and put ruminants on it to uh, heal the soil um, o over time. So um, to me, pasture is, is sort of a crucially important in, in, in maintaining the fertility of the soil. Um, and now at the moment there, there is a sort of, there are binary messages in, in, in the media about good and bad. And, and life is rarely binary, life is normally nuanced. Um, and so pastoral farmers find themselves being demonised in the media. Um, which seems quite incapable of distinguishing between industrial uh, farming, uh, where the animals are, are, are kept inside and fed on, on, on grain and so on, and, and pastoral uh, farming. And um, yes, I seem to remember when, I, when I, my son encouraged me to go to Star Wars, and I remember hearing this phrase, the empire wins by making us feel alone. Um, and I, it just struck me and I wrote it down and I thought it was, it was pertinent. And then, um, yeah, so, um, but in fact, as we can see, um, pastoral farmers are not alone. There are tens, hundreds, thousands of pastoral farmers. Uh, right across the globe and what I, what I, uh, I wanted to thank them for the work that they do in uh, nurturing the soil, in building soil, uh, in caring for their animals and for farming in conversation with nature and I think I closed by saying something like, uh, may the force be with you. Thank you. So, that's John Meadley on Permaculture Media. Thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed this film, please subscribe and press the little bell button and we will notify you every time we release one of our new films. And thanks very much for watching. I want to God himself.